All right, please be seated. Okay, so we're still on day three, and we're about to listen to another witness. But before we do, just a quick heads up. Ever since the court went back into session after lunchtime, the sound guy seems to be drunk or something. So I'll be doing the best I can, but if you watched the last couple of videos, you know day three has some pretty terrible audio. Ms. Lowell, uh, please come forward. Yep, keep going. You're good. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name and spell your last name? Sheena Lowell, L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Sheena, where do you currently live? <laughs> Nebraska. And did you used to live closer to the area? Wisconsin, yes. When did you move? Um, two years ago. Were you with these folks tubing on the river on yes. July 30, 2022? Yes. And did you did you actually take this photo? Yes, I did. Okay. And then is that you kind of cropped in there on the bottom? Yes. Okay. Were you in a relationship with Quentin at the time? Yes. Okay. So that was your connection to other people in the group? Yes. Are you and Quentin current, or have you guys separated since? Yes. And have you had contact with anyone from that group since you and Quentin separated? No. And Sheena, do you have any prior criminal convictions? Yes. How many? Three. On July 30, 2022, um, were you drinking? No. You were sober? Yes. Do you just never drink or were you a sober driver that day or? I'm a recovering alcoholic. Okay. At some point along the tube, tubing route, did something catch, catch your group's attention? We were coming around, it looked like a bend on the river, and a group of younger kids were screaming for help. And what do you remember after that? I remember as we were getting closer, they were yelling, help, please get this person away from us. The kids in our group got up off of the tubes, walked over to get in between to get him away from them. Do you, do you recall who the first ones that walked over were? Madison. And did Madison make contact with the gentleman or speak with the general, the, the guy? She was pointing downriver, just saying, get away, go, <clears throat> leave them alone. Okay. And what happened after that that you remember? They all were basically doing the same thing. Um, and then he punched her in the face. Did you see which hand he used, right hand, left hand? Could you see where, from where you were? No. Okay. You just saw hand go to her face, but you couldn't tell? I don't remember. Okay. Were you looking from profile or from straight on or? From straight on. Okay. And have you ever seen the video of the incident? No. You, when did you get to Wisconsin from Nebraska for your testimony? Yesterday morning. Okay, and you haven't, and when we, did, you spoke with us prior to testifying? Yes. And by phone, not in person? Yes. So you still to this day haven't seen the video? No. After the guy punched Maddie, uh, what did you see after that? After he punched Madison, Dante punched him twice. He went under the water the first time. He came back up. Dante punched him one more time. And then it looked like he was punching them back, but he was actually stabbing them. And when you say them, who did you see? And when I say he, I, you didn't know who he was at the time? No, sir. Now you know to him to be Nikolai Mew? Yes. Okay. And when, when you said you saw him, you thought hitting people, who did you see him hit? Riley, Dante, Tony, AJ. And when, he, when you thought he hit Riley, could you see what she was doing? She was yelling. Was, did you see her push or strike at Mew at all? No. She turned around and started running. And... 
What about, um, what do you recall about seeing uh, Dante hit? When Dante was hit, it, it just looked like he was being punched and he did, he retreated also. So the stabbing was effective then? Did you ever see Dante hit Mew after those first two strikes you saw? No, sir. And when Dante was, when you thought hit, turned out to be stabbed, was that sometime after Dante had hit Mew? Yes. Do you remember this specific sequence? No. Okay. And do you see yourself in that image? I do. Can you describe where you are in that image? Standing up behind the two kids. And are you in the white bikini top there in the background? Yes. Was your hair light back then? Yes. And you're facing pretty much straight on towards the cameraman and the person off to the left? Yes. Where are you in that? Or do you see yourself in that photo? Yep, in the same spot. Facing straight on towards the cameraman, essentially? Yes. See yourself in that still frame? Yes. And Standing up between the twos. Do you see yourself in that one also? Yes. Same thing, looking towards the incident? Yes. Okay. Do you recall... Do you recall seeing where... Nikolai went afterwards? Straight back up into the woods. Do you see him go towards the woods or into the woods? Towards the woods. And then when you saw him going towards the woods, um, did you look away before you actually saw where he went? Yes. Did something else catch your attention? Yes, Riley did. So you were basically standing by your tubes and watched everything? Yes. And you're stone cold sober? Yes. Do you remember, did it... Did the incident happen fast, slow? How do you remember it? It happened really fast. Is it hard to say exactly what happened first, second, third? Yes. You're sure you saw him uh, punch Maddie? Yes. And you, did you tell these, were you interviewed by law enforcement shortly afterwards? Yes, I was. And you told, did you tell law enforcement what you saw? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, I'll stretch. Just prophecy. Ms. Lowell, um, can you say that you, do you hear this group of six, the six boys, young men, asking for help? Yes. Okay. And do you look over and see what's going on? Yes. Okay. And you see that there's one man there, right, Mr. Mew? Yes. Okay. You say to the police that this guy was harassing them, right? Yes. Okay. What did you see him doing? He was holding their tubes. He would not let them go. He would not let the tubes go? No. Did you see Mr. Mew walk around the tubes and walk away from the boys downstream a little bit? No. You didn't see that? No. Okay. At that point, you say Madison gets off her tube and starts to walk over there. Is that right? Yes. And do you recall Mr. Mew walking over toward Madison? No, Madison met him at the tube. At the tubes? Yes. So you're saying that Mr. Mew didn't walk towards Madison at all? No. If I told you the distance from where you were, where your group was to the incident, is about 131 feet. Sound about right to you? Yes. Okay. So you're 40... Five yards or so away. Yes. Yes? Okay. When Madison, so you say Madison walks over to Mr. Mew, she just starts yelling at him, doesn't she? She put her hand up like this and said, get away from them. Well, what she actually said on tape was, go, go, get your fucking ass, objection, go. Judge. What's the objection? Come on up, please, please, come on up. Next question, please. Ms. Lowell, do you hear uh, Ms. Cohen say, go, go, get your fucking ass, go? Do you hear that? I do not. You see her pointing down river to Mr. Mew, is that right? Yes. Okay. And do you see at that point Dante 
Yes. Let me finish, okay. Next to Madison. Yes. Okay. Do you see Dante pointing for him to go down river as well? Yes. Do you know where or if Mr. Mew has a group with him? No. Okay. So you wouldn't know if the group is actually behind you almost, right? And he's got to go the other way, upriver to get out to get out of that situation, right? You wouldn't know that. No. Okay. Would you describe Madison Cohen as getting in Mr. Mew's face? No. You wouldn't describe her as getting in his personal space? No. Do you see her put her hands on him? No. Well, I did in the video. Do you know if she did? Yes. You know she did? I know she didn't. You, all right, so you're testifying under oath not only that you didn't see it, but you know she didn't do it. Right? I know she didn't. Okay. I think she'd be very surprised at all the things that she doesn't know. Did you see Riley put her hands on Mr. Mew? No. You've, you've testified that you saw Mr. Mew punch Madison. Yes? yes? You don't recall with which hand. Is that fair? That's fair. Do you see Madison come back to your group? Yes. Okay. Is she holding her face? Yes, she came straight to me. What side of her face is she holding? Her right. Do you have a phone with you? I do. It's shut off. No, I don't mean right now. Yes. <laughs> back then, I meant. No. Okay. Um, on that day, it's okay. On that day, you didn't have a phone with you. No. Okay. There comes a time when I think Madison is calling nine one one though, so she has a phone, right? To your knowledge. We found a phone and hit a button to call nine one one. Okay. Here's my question. Do you recall anyone taking photographs of Madison's face? No. The police. You saw the police take photos yes. of her face? Okay. Can I ask you this? There's a gentleman on the end there with a beard. See the gentleman who was taking the photographs of her? There were several police there, not just one. Okay. So I you don't know. Do that? I believe I spoke with him once, okay. but I've spoke with probably six or seven officers. Can you describe the punch? It's been described various ways in court. Can you describe it? It was just a quick punch, as you would see somebody punch somebody. So it was, it's been described different ways. So it was just a punch, like straight on punch. Yes. With his right hand. No? I don't know. Okay. At that point, you see Dante punch Mr. Mew in the face. Yes. And you see Mr. Mew go down. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you see Dante hit him again. He comes back up and Dante hits him one more time. Do you recall Dante hitting Mr. Mew while Mr. Mew was on his back in the water? No. Okay. Are you saying that you saw Mr. Mew rise to his feet and Dante hit him again? Yes. Actually, Butterscotch Schnapps hit him twice while he was down. Twice. No honor whatsoever. What did, when that happened, did Mr. Mew go down again? No. That was when he just started punching. Okay. So... I just want to make sure I'm hearing you. Mr. Mew gets punched in the face by Dante, and you see him go down. Yes? Yes. Then he rises up. Yes. He being Mr. Mew. He rises back up. Dante punches him again in the face, and then Mr. Mew, I think you describe it as, gets to punching. Yes. Okay. Do you, you know, do you know A.J. Martin? I very briefly met him before our tubing trip. Okay. Do you, from your vantage point, do you see A.J. Martin come up behind Mr. Mew and shove him? No. Do you see Mr. Mew, as you describe it, punch or stab A.J. Martin? Yes. Do you see A.J. Martin, when, when that's happening, pushing Mr. Mew backwards into the water? No. Oh, of course not. That would be exculpatory evidence for Mr. Mew. We can't have that. Do you see Dante? I'm sorry. Do you see uh, Anthony Carlson get stabbed? Yes. Do you see Anthony put his hands on Mr. Mew? On Mr. Mew's kind of backside. When I say backside, like his back. Shoulder area before that happens. 
No, because he was facing him. Okay. Wow. We know more about this case than she does. I know you don't know or didn't know Isaac Schumann. Did you see the interaction between Mr. Mew and Isaac Schumann? No, I did not. Okay. Did you see the interaction between Mr. Mew and Dante? Yes. Okay. And do you recall when that happens in this kind of like sequential events? Dante was the second or third person. Okay. So you didn't see Dante and Mr. Mew have contact after everything was done when Dante No, was because they had come running to me. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure I understand. In your recollection, Dante is second or third? Yes. Okay. Ms. Wall, I don't have any other questions for you. Thank you for your time today. Yeah. Hold on a second. There might be another question. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Um, Shana, what I, what the, do you recall the questions I asked you on direct, generally? I'll, I'll be more specific. Your interview with law enforcement, um, has this gotten a lot more detailed, the questions you've been asked here, than what you talked about with law enforcement? Yes. So you're trying to remember back almost two years ago. Yes. You're trying your best to answer as truthfully as you, the best you can remember. Yes. Where, given where you were about 130 feet away, your ability to see would, would it have been affected depending on if there's other people between you and what's going on? Yes. And you testified on direct that you couldn't remember the sequence of events of when who, when people were hit turned out to be stabbed. So do you know do you know for sure that Dante was the last one stabbed? Objection. No. Sustained, but she's answered. If you hear objection, just hold your answer. Okay. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Mr. Shaughnessy. There were there was a group of people around that incident when it was going on. Is that fair? Not until after after the fight ensued. We were the only people at first. I, I guess what I'm going to ask is this, Judge Mackroach. Yes. I'm going to show you what has been moved into evidence as exhibit number 104. Okay. Judge, that, can we approach? Yes. I'm show you where I'm showing you what is exhibit number 104, okay? Yes. Now, if you look at 104, there's a G1. I'm telling you that stands for the group of boys. Yes. Okay? And G2 is the general location of where I'm calling it the Carlson group, where your tubes were. Yes. Okay? These little dots have initials on them. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, and those initials are the names of people that were involved in this. Yes. Okay. Do you recognize what RM would be? Riley. Okay. And MC? Madison. Okay, so you, I'm not going to quiz you, but you understand that's kind of where we're going. Yes. Okay. This has been, well, can I ask you this? Would you agree that based on your rec recollection of events, that this is an accurate depiction of the general location of where people were at the time that Madison and Riley were standing in front of Mr. Mew? Yes. Okay. And so tell me if this is fair. You're around G2. Can you bring that up there? Can you bring up 104? Okay. So you're you're standing in the general direction of where it says G two. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And you're looking toward what's going on, right? Yes. All right. And would you agree there are people between you and Madison? Yes. Okay. And. Having people between you and Madison could impact your ability to see specifics, right? Yes. Okay, and that 
is that one of the reasons it was difficult for you to see how she was struck? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Judge, can we approach real quick? Yes. Almost done. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Judge. One second. In that still frame, 2166, can you see Dante? Yes. Can you see yourself? Yes. On this diagram, 104, is Dante in between and would be obstructing view from G2? Yes. In that still frame, was he obstructing your view? Yes. Can we, let's bring up, can we bring up two on you? I object, Judge. She's answered. Bring it up. I'll let, I'll let both sides clean it up from time to time. I guess I'll re-ask it. Depending on where, what you're viewing, you know, whether, whether you're looking at something to the left of this frame or to the right of the frame or directly on the, behind Dante, it would depend on whether Dante is blocking your view or not. Is that fair? Yes. Mr. Shafferson? Can you bring up 2166 here? Ms. Lowe, while you might have a clear shot without Dante in your way right there, you don't have any idea if anything's actually happening at that moment, do you? No. That's it. Ms. Lowell, thank you. You may step down. Please see the witness coordinator in the back, and she'll tell you where to go next. So, yeah, that that was some pretty terrible testimony. But I think it's a result of her not watching the footage. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not so sure any of them should have watched the footage before they testified anyway. I certainly don't think they should be sitting in the courtroom watching the trial, waiting for their turn to testify. It just goes to show how difficult it would have been to convict Mew if the prosecution had followed all the rules. Because if all the testimonies were this bad, could they still have convicted Mew? I don't know. All I know is that the prosecution was on damage control after Chirophacy came out there and destroyed that girl. But with that, I'm moving on to the next. There's only one more witness for day three, and I believe it's someone from Mr. Mew's group again. I can't wait to see just how disastrous that will be. <laughs> because I've been told that some of the people from his group had some pretty harsh testimony against him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, because so far, all these Reddit whores that I've been chatting with haven't told me a single thing that turned out to be true. I take them at their word, and they always turn out to be wrong. Just like Sheena over here. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Okay. So I'll be back soon with the next one. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Hey, fuck you.